Did you want to sit on the other side of the stuff? We'll begin the meeting with a moment of silence. I'll announce that the meeting is being recorded and televised by the local cable company. I'd like a motion to approve bill and payroll warrants. So moved. Second. So any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Accept correspondence in the read file. A motion, please. So moved. Second. Any right, discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Public forum. Now's the time for anyone to speak up if they have something to say that's not on the agenda. Approval of meeting minutes, open session, January 8th, 2019. So moved. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. January 22nd, 2018. So moved. Second. Questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Stay. First item on the agenda, town administrator's report. Frank. Mr. Chairman, can we? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Go yes. Out of order on this? Yes. I was asked if we could go out of order to deal with the review of the proposed bond refinancing under budget review so that the gentleman that's here can get back to where he came from <laughs> with ease. Beth, Mary Beth, and yes. <coughs> Well, good evening, and first of all, let me thank you for taking me out of order. I have a little bit of a, a little bit of a trip ahead of me. Um, Mary Beth and I are here tonight because we, the town has a chance to refinance some outstanding bonds, and we wanted to introduce you to that and and get your okay to proceed. Um, in 2011, you sold approximately $10 million of bonds for the police station. Those bonds are first redeemable this coming June, and the interest rates are in between three and and go as high as 5%. Um, <clears throat> and you now can sell bonds to refinance them, or in our term, the business refund those bonds. And that's what we'd like to do. Um, it'd be approximately a $5.3 million issue. We think <clears throat> we're projecting over the life of the um, refunding bonds, which is 11 years, it'd be about $275,000 of savings, um, or in present value terms, about $240,000 of savings. And those figures are both after all the issuance costs are paid. Um, it's Frankly, it's not a terrific refunding, um, but it's a general sense in the market the rates are going to go up, and I th it's one of those refundings that makes sense to take the savings and enjoy them. So um, that's what we'd like to do, and we've also are asking you to take a vote tonight to um, allow Mary Beth to proceed, and that's <clears throat> part procedural, simply to protect um, the town, um, a quirky characteristic of refunding bonds is this boards of selectmen approve them, but often that approval doesn't come until after the bonds are actually sold. I think that's a little inappropriate. I think you folks should be on board saying, yes, we want to proceed, number one. And number two, I think it's just very wise to let you know that the issue is coming so you have a sense to provide any input if you'd like. Uh, someone like to make a motion and then we'll discuss it. Uh, make a move, motion. Second. Frank, do you want anything to say about this? Yes. Originally, uh, uh, Randy, when he was on the Finance Committee, had suggested we look at it. At that time, there were still penalties associated with the early payment. Clark has found that this is an appropriate time for us to do it, and 20000 a year is a significant amount of money for us, and I think it's well worthwhile to proceed with it. Okay, anyone else have any questions? No, it's it's saving money, sense. that's perfect sense. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, well, no, uh, the motion's been made and seconded, all those in favor. All right. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Clark, do we have to read the motion? Um, is you this one of those where we have to? I'm sorry, the formal motion? Is this one where we have to do the formal motion, or is that after the? Uh, it'll happen both times. <clears throat> this time, there was a form that was provided. 
there was a form of the vote that's a more abbreviated one that's provided for tonight, but the bonds are to be selling on March 18th at your meeting on March 19th. You'll take a formal vote which confirms the approval of the sale, awards the bonds, and goes through several other motions associated with the structure of the issue. So the vote we just took is adequate for now? Yes, yes. yes. Okay. Okay, Frank, you're up. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Mary Beth. Uh, I've spent a little time going through and trying to analyze our current financial conditions as well as an assessment of what brought us here and how we move forward. So I, I'd like to... Uh, read a brief statement and then go through some of these numbers. The issue at hand for us tonight is one of revenue and municipal services. While we've had periods in the past where revenues were light, we have always managed to balance demand and available funds to provide expected service to our citizens. The services most in demand are public safety, security, and education. These are also the departments that require the lion's share of our financial resources. A review of our attached budget, and there is a budget attached to this, reflects the impact that these budgets have on our year-to-year -year comparisons. Last year, we as a town, and voted at town meeting, made a decision to support the increased cost to education by using capital stabilization funds to service debt. That option is not available this year. In order to continue to provide the services the citizens of Whitman have come to expect, it will be necessary to reset our financial processes. Growth is the key measurement in doing so. We cannot fund multi-million dollar increases when growth is limited to 970000 a year. Moving forward, a comprehensive budget plan must be established, limiting increases to what can be raised from year to year. This will require cooperation of all departments working in conjunction with the town's financial team. Now, what I did is I took the last five years, including the current year, and ask the accountant to do some summaries. So at this point, I'm going to ask Ken Lytle to explain um, what he did in preparing this analysis. I went through the, I went through the annual reports. Um, particularly the general fund expenditures lines uh, from FY15 through 18. These were actual figures uh, that were pulled from each fund. Um, public safety has been divided between police, fire, and inspection services. The schools have been divided between the Whitman Hanson District, uh, South Shore of Oak Tech, Norfolk Aggie, uh, while the others um, are rolled up as shown. Uh, the unclassified line um, is a combination of health and life insurance, uh, general liability, unemployment, uh, county retirement, and the Medicare and town match. Uh, the FY19 figures are not actuals. Uh, they are just the appropriated or the budgeted amounts um, that we had projected for at the start of FY19. A particular note is a, as we go through these numbers, the in the last five years, the uh, budget increases are as follows. Police 14, fire 31, inspectional services 10, public safety as a whole 22, uh, general government 23.8. When you go to the schools in the last five years, the uh, school district has gone up 34.7, South Shore 32, uh, Norfolk Aggie 15, 
and then the total added up is 34 percent. DPW 3.9, Human Services 2.6, Culture and Recreation 10.9, Debt Service minus 12 percent, and then the unclassifieds that Ken just mentioned, 28.4. What's really noteworthy is in the last four years, our total expenditures rose from 16 to 19, 4.38 percent, 1.27, 7.66, and 9.74. Each of those budgets significantly exceeds our ability to generally raise money. Our growth uh, capability today for this year is $970,000. But our budget this year increased 2.7 million. So it, it doesn't take immense a Mensa candidate to figure out that we have to make a number of adjustments in order to make this system work. Um, last week, um, in the end of the previous week, I took a few moments to meet with representatives from each of the town units to talk about my concern and my intent to approach the board tonight to seek permission to start a dialogue on a wage freeze. Uh, you have a pro forma worksheet. It's two pages. Looks like this. Without making any adjustments and just doing what we normally do, we'll be short three million dollars this year. FY20. So clearly, we need to deal with this. Uh, the wage freeze that I am seeking permission to discuss uh, for the town of Whitman would mean $396,580. I'm suggesting that we consider two years to right the ship at the same time we need to seek an override in order to adjust our revenue numbers. And I would like to see the uh, debt exclusion established for the remaining 10 years of the bond we just talked about tonight. If those things come together, the difference in budgets would mean a levy availability of 1292000 Of that, 600000 from free cash would be used for capital, and the other 546 in free cash, if people go along, would be deposited to the stabilization accounts. The challenge here is still one of making these budgets work. Uh, we have to contain our growth. We have to find a way for the larger departments to work within the limits that we've discussed. It will mean a significant adjustment for Whitman Hansen. It will uh, mean in whatever way we have to working with the other two schools, South Shore of Oak and Norfolk Aggie, and making a case for affordability for everyone. It will also involve talking to the other towns that are participants in South Shore, since we're only one of nine communities and the budget is passed by five. Uh, the last thing I've attached is a levy calculation sheet. Currently, we raise in taxes $25,343,000. 89.2% of that is residential. 
5.3% is commercial, one and a quarter is industrial, and 4.13 is personal property. So clearly, the 95.87% of the tax burden rests with property owners, be them residential or commercial. In order to raise $2.5 million, which I think is the number we need to, and, and we're going to continue this discussion over the next couple of weeks, uh, to make ourselves financially stable, it would raise the tax rate from 1538 to 1690. It would increase the median family household tax bill by $467.40. It really is going to come down to a decision on how, what kind of community we want to be and where we want to put our resources. But there's no magic bullet here. If these ideas don't work, then we're going to have to downsize the, the municipal operations. There's no other way to do it. Not a terribly inspiring commentary, but one that's been coming. I talked about it last year. It's not a surprise to anyone. Um, I, you know, I would say that over the years, we have managed to maintain a reasonable uh, operation. We've recognized we've had good days and bad days, uh, or budgets, I should say, and we've managed to work, work our way through them. There's no working through this one. The only thing that's going to fix this is a combination of reduction in expense and increase in revenue. Does anyone have any questions of Frank or any comments? I actually do. <clears throat> Frank, on the, um, on the performer worksheet, you had down um, the free cash available for capital at 600000 is that something that will be earmarked? Yes, if, if we do what I suggest, I would take 600000 I would recommend taking 600000 to put toward capital expenditures and bank the rest and start building a capital fund. I would, uh, as you all know, we engaged the Collins Center to come in and assist us in developing a comprehensive capital plan. Uh, it's something we just haven't had the resources to do. And, you know, I recognize that. Uh, we sought funding, we received it, and they're at work right now putting together a complete analysis of our operations going back five years, and I suggested at some point going back a little further than that to get a full sense of what we've been doing. And then defining a process and priorities. It's not going to increase our money. So so without without an increase in revenue, um, the only way to fund capital is to cut operations and people. That's not what I'm looking to do. Frank, on the capital thing, you're talking about paying for things like Article 10 and 11 for the cruises and maybe a sidewalk plow and stuff like that. So take it out of raising appropriate and put it and pay for it that way, that we will save that amount of money? Well, it, it, they would be raised within the confines of Prop 2 and a half, but there'll be a capital allocation in that money that we raise. Right, but Article 10 says to raise it and appropriate 65, 870 and change for three uh, annual payments right. of cruises. Rather than take it raise and appropriate, you're saying to motion to have it come out of the... That no, you would still be raising that money, Dan. Yeah. But the the separation in that 
that money, the, ca the, the capital, uh, the free cash is not going to fund our capital needs. It's going to help us to fund it. Right. But if you look at the number, the levy available is a million two ninety two. It would be coming out of that. We would be, we would be raising money to pay for capital costs. We would be banking funds to build a capital account, and we would start a process where we can have predictable revenue from year to year to manage that. Part of this means that that money has to re remain available for capital. It can't be used for budgets. Exactly. The budgets are going to have to be funded based on our growth, which next year will be a million dollars. So the budgets for the town have to stay within that parameter in order for us to continue to fund these operations. Otherwise, we're back where we are, and that won't work. So in answer to your question, I guess, you're probably looking at a million five a year in capital spending. And that's above and beyond paying that debt. Um, other question I have is on the schools. Uh, where South Shore Tech has eight towns. It'll be very difficult to ask them to hold on a raise for eight, you know, eight towns. Considering... Well, I don't know what the other communities are going through. Yeah. But when you look at these numbers, uh, you know, education is expensive. I'll, I'll grant that. Um, it's very expensive. But we have to pay for it within our revenue stream, and we're not doing that right now. But, you know, 970000 this year, new growth. That's money we didn't have last year. This year we increased just in education two million four. But I'm looking at South Shore Tech, it's forty eight thousand increase because that to us, our town. Yeah, but South Shore's five year increase is thirty two percent. Whether it's a million or five million. Just because you know the pro the problem with these comparisons is when the numbers are small, they don't stand out as much. Whitman Hansen is a huge part of our education budget. What isn't in here, and what typically is when you look at other communities, is the Chapter 70 money. It goes directly to the school. So while, it, while we're reflecting in our budget that we are only contributing $15 million, I never thought I'd say only in that together, uh, to Whitman Hanson, in reality, we're contributing about $27 million because the Chapter 70 money that in Abington goes into their general budget and then goes to the school, in our case, just bypasses us. So it's, it's, it's not that we're lacking effort on it. It's that we're geared to a system that yeah, the chapter 70 just money grows that, and grows. The Chapter 70 and money that would go it. to Abington, right, in their budget? Yeah. Does, isn't that earmarked for schools? They can't use it, even though it goes to their general fund, they can't use it for other things? Well, yeah, they use it for schools, but if they have that money, that means they don't have to spend as much out of the other budget. No, you don't mean what I'd say. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Okay. Let's say it's $7 million. Yeah. And let's say the school cost of $14 million. And let's say they only have 13. As long as they get 13, they're getting the seven. Oh, yeah. But they have that option. We don't. And I'm not suggesting that we wouldn't do it. I'm just saying it's a very different number for comparison because it looks like we're not contributing anything to the system, and we are. Yeah, Mr. Chairman. Yes. <clears throat> um, I, I was at the last couple of school committee meetings when uh, both times it came up from the superintendent and the committee that, um, that we were not extremely forthcoming with this kind of information, but I want to commend you on putting this together because it's fantastic. My question is, have we sent this to them and can we send this as soon as possible so they understand I'll this? put it on the web tomorrow and I'll send it to them. Okay, because that came up often. One of the points I'd like to make, and thank you for reminding me, um, I mentioned earlier I'm, I'm asking for permission of the Board of Selectmen to reach out to the unions and start a dialogue. Uh, I had said a couple of weeks ago uh, 
that I wanted to look into that. And when I had a conversation, uh, I don't know, three weeks ago with the superintendent and deputy and assistant and Chairman Kowalski and the finance committee chair, we talked about a couple of issues, one of them being kindergarten, another being the elephant in the room, our budget. And I mentioned to them at that point that I believe we would be looking for wage concessions this year. So it, it should not have been a surprise. I have not met for bargaining purposes with any member of any union. I have had a very casual, upfront meeting with a representative from each of the five unions in the town and with Mrs. Stafford, who I've known for 30 years, and had a very casual conversation about the fact that we're against it. We're up against the wall. And one of the only ways I see out of it are an override and wage freeze, in that I would be coming to the Board of Selectmen to seek approval to do that, and then certainly reach out to the school committee. Um, if the school committee took that as a uh, uh, end around, an end run around them, it shouldn't be. There was there was nothing more than a very simple conversation about where we were, and if I ruffled any feathers or if people felt that I was overstepping, I know we don't bargain with school employees. I know the region does. And it was my intention after this meeting to reach out to them. So if there's any uh, misunderstanding there, I'll take full blame for it. Well, you know, you, you seem to have a, a number here for what the override would be with that combination. But um, what is that override number going to have to be if there is no desire to act on this? Um, well, it's going to be a real problem because 700 and, let me see, I have it here somewhere. 36. Uh, wage freeze. 780,000 uh, in wage freeze would be attributable to the school budget based on, based on what we know is the presented assessment and what they've told us were the wage or salary increases this year. So I took the same, I took the same approach that I did with the town. And the 780 is our share of the million five, million 375,000. That's the total increase for the region's operation. It's our 59.82%. And if we don't have it, it's going to be a problem. That means we're going to have to find somewhere else to make up that 780,000. Yeah, Rick, Rick, I think you remember the meeting that we were at. It was called, it, the superintendent asked us to go to a meeting with, yeah. with, with Frank uh, because of the, um, I think it, it had to do with the petition that he was being presented with about all day kindergarten. Right. He was and that's why he, he needed a meeting in order to talk to us about that. Uh, it wasn't our calling a meeting to talk about that. He called the meeting. And if I recall correctly, uh, Frank's giving a, um, an accurate version of the meeting, but if I also recall correct, correctly, um, at, near the end of the meeting, I, I asked him if they had spoken to the schools during this year about uh, getting some sort of relief on wage increases, if they had talked to the unions. And he, his response, if I remember correctly, if, if I'm wrong, let me know, was I, I, don't think that, was, I don't think they'd go for that. It was something <coughs> like that. But uh, another school committee member was there, he was there, yeah. the assistant superintendent were there. They knew then that yeah. we were interested in that kind of a dialogue. So when, when Frank spoke to, um, to Beth Stafford, it was, um, basically giving her a, a heads up that he was going to ask us permission to talk to all of the unions about about that thing. And actually that was part of a conversation that we had in the finance committee was that we wouldn't actually talk about what the specific plan was with moving forward with the unions until the unions were made aware of the fact that that was mm -hmm. the direction we were going in. So, 
My purpose from the first meeting was simply to not blindside them at this meeting. Frank, the number that you gave us for the increase in taxes, that's for both the debt exclusion and the override together? Or just no. If you look at the last chart, uh, The 45 cents per thousand, which is the second line in these calculations, would generate approximately what the debt payment is, $741,291. And that would be added to the 1690 Yes, but that would be a exclusion. It would, right. it would be going down mm -hmm. each year. So That's you would add... Basically, you'd add 467 plus 138 if we did both. And those other suggestions six after six that six are just six. for informational purposes. There's right. Nothing just tied. an analysis to yeah. show, right. you know, what would happen if we went up 25 cents? What happens if we go up 50 cents? Right. Wow. It's... it's it's the law of large numbers. So that would be 605.78 on a median household. If we did both, yes. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to um, just offer a, a suggestion that, um, and I think I brought this up before, that we, before town meeting, a few weeks out, once this is more solidified, if we would have some kind of a town like a pre-town meeting budget forum that we could educate everyone on this kind of information to see this right in front of them so they understand exactly what's going on and um, I was talking with some other folks and they gave me the suggestion that maybe also before that meeting for a few hours at each we could have kind of like a budget fair where every town department could have a table and they could People could come in early and and go to table to table and have their, each department show how this affects them and what would happen if if it didn't if the overrides don't go through and so they can see both sides of the coin so they'd be able to make an educated decision on election day. Not a bad idea. Good. I'll just figure. Anybody else? It sounds fun, but it won't be. What? It sounds fun, but it won't be. Yeah. A fair. <laughs> it's not a fair. We did that in 2003, I think. Uh, we had this maybe two days. years ago. We had a, a kind of a vendor show mm. on a Saturday where all the departments had a table and people came in and asked what they did. And, mm -hmm. I, I think there will probably be a little more interest in that now yeah. with numbers coming out. Uh, and I, I'm all for anything that gets people more informed. Would this be the day of the, the, the town meeting or would this No, I think we should do this a few weeks ahead of time so people can digest this information. And, and I think ideally, I thought about this for a while, if we could have, maybe to have it on a Saturday, and have the afternoon be the budget forum um, where the tables are, the, the fair part, and then we could roll right into the the um, mock town meeting, if you will, an informational session so people can see this. Because, quite frankly, I don't think there's a, a ton of people watching. Uh, and you'll they'll read it in the newspapers, obviously, and then they could watch it online maybe. But if they knew with this in their hand, exactly what's going to happen on each side of the coin they can make that decision because ultimately it's their money they have to decide what kind of town they want. Would we leave uh, time before the meeting for each person to stand up and talk? Would that be more efficient to just get up because they would maybe, be able to... Maybe each town department could just give a presentation I guess maybe that would 
probably make it easier. That's I mean, in, there in, instead of a fair, have, have a, an informational meeting, but each one of the department heads would have a, I mean, have a chance to, to say you, something. Sure. Just yeah. to get them, would just we have time ideas, to have Ideas, bantering around ideas. To, ultimately, we want to get the information out so people can make an educated choice. Yeah, that came up. I think you brought it up before yeah. the idea of a pre-town meeting, and right. it's, it's a good idea. Yeah. I, I asked Frank this question that, um, over the weekend. Um, what what makes what's a budget document? You know, the first budget document. What, what is that? I said I, I I don't know why Article Two is not considered a budget document because it's something that everybody sees every year. A lot of work goes into. Um, Article Article Two, the, actually the whole the whole package, mm -hmm. from uh, the finance committee meeting with all the department chairs, taking requests in for their their um, their suggestions about what should happen the next year. Um, then we have a town meeting, which we go over it, and line by line, it's all laid out. Why mm -hmm. why wouldn't someone consider this a budget document? And Frank said, you know, very simply, he says, well, because maybe because they get it the night of the town meeting. And there's not enough room to, to, to digest it. it. It becomes more real if there's, uh, if there's more time. And that's, exactly. so that, that goes right into that, that pre thing. Yeah. The, um, we have an, another item a, a little way down the line on the update on the community assessment survey. Mm -hmm. Remember when we, we threw that, that idea out, uh, a number of people came to that, the stakeholders came, came that night. And that, that resulted in, 1,062 responses um, to, to the survey, 1,000 responses. Uh, there, there's a, a lot of interest in our town, where our town is going, how we should get there, what kinds of methods we should use to either raise funds or, or, or cut expenses. Exactly. And um, I, I think that the, the meeting that you're discussing, or that you're just suggesting, um, could engender the same kind of, of interest too. I'm, 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 I'm encouraged because of the response to the, uh, the survey, which um, when we get to it, we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit. But, yeah. I agree. Yeah. Anybody else? Uh, Frank is looking for a motion. He's looking for a motion from the board to authorize him to um, carry out um, his plot. <laughs> to, carry, to, carry, to carry out what he's to reach to out to the to reach out to the, one and one of the steps is to um, reach out to the associations of the unions and to talk about a possible wage raise. I make that motion. Second. Any discussion of that? All those in favor? Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, You're authorized to continue doing what you. What I would like to do is uh, because this is so involved. Uh, I, I'm going to invite, although I can't enforce it, uh, collaborative or coalition bargaining where we have representatives from each of the unions come together in a common format mm -hmm. so we can at least start talking about it. And I would like uh, one or two selectmen available to sure. participate in that. So, Who's interested in doing that? Randy is. Randy and Scott. That, that's actually when Frank and I had, had brief discussions about this. I thought that would be the best, uh, one of the best courses of action of all about is kind of this group meeting where everything's on the table, mm -hmm. where every union at once knows what what they're going to be facing, and also probably have department heads there as well, Frank. Uh, just just an open, transparent meeting where everyone at the same time is is on board. In the in the initial part of it, we would definitely want. Uh, department heads. When we get into the right. brass tax of bargaining, then we respect the bargaining process. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does that did that uh, conclude your uh, your report, Frank? I hope so. <laughs> okay. Frank, I did want to ask you. You said that you can put this on the website for us. Yes. So everybody can get a quick look at it. Yep. Great. We'll do it tomorrow. Frank. I've got a brief question for clarification. Um, looking past town meeting, when this goes to the ballot box, is the override and debt exclusion, are these going to be separate questions? Uh, yes. No. Yes, there would be. And the format will be determined when the board votes. 
to call for the question. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry it's uh, it's so late, guys. But you've been here for a while, but now it, we're at the Finance Committee budget update. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, since we met last in January, the Finance Committee completed the final initial budget meetings with the Town Department. We met with the Accountant, Treasury Collector, Technology, and South Shore Vote Tech. As you recall, the main uh, topic for these initial meetings was to get the impact on a 3 or a 6 percent cut to each department budget. Much like the 12 previous meetings, um, the, the impact uh, described a detrimental effect on services and overall staff reductions. So we're now looking to take the information Frank has prepared for this meeting and map out a strategy with the Board of Selectmen to present a town meeting. As, as there's a significant amount of information here, I, I would suggest that we take a couple of weeks. I think we're next scheduled to meet with the Board of Selectmen in March, March 13th, okay. maybe, yep. at our next meeting. Um, and at the same time, we are going to begin the second round of our budget meetings with town departments. So our initial hope was to provide them with more information about the direction that we're going, but unfortunately, we're not going to be there yet. But time won't allow us to delay the meetings, the second right. meetings with town departments. So the focus on this particular round of meetings with town departments will be more focused on their budgets and less on the impact of the potential cuts. Mm -hmm. So last time we met with the departments, it was explained that you know the main focus of that initial meeting was for impact statements. So, so the questions now will be more relative to specific items on each of the individual budgets. And I think I speak for the entire board when I say that we're prepared to make some very difficult decisions about the future of this community. Without a doubt, there needs to be a significant correction here in order to give the taxpayers the confidence that we have a sustainable budget for at least the next five years. So we are committed to meeting with the Board of Selectmen and whatever it takes to get the process Great. back Thank you, Anyone else want to change? Uh, Scott? I have nothing to add to the budget at this point. <laughs> Hey, we're at the uh, community assessment. Frank, do you want to give an update on, on that? And I'll, I have a few things I'd like to mention. Sure. Um, yeah. we, we have received, and I put this in quotes, the final report, which is essentially just the statistical data. I have spoken with Dr. Torsi. She is putting together a, a uh, formatted report that will provide all of the information collected um, in a, I guess, an explanatory format with graphics and uh, emphasis. And I'd like to do that uh, with a public meeting similar to what we did when we announced this. Uh, I suspect the best day for that type of meeting would probably be a Thursday because every other night either town boards or school mm. committees are meeting. So I'm going to ask her what the next couple of Thursdays look like. And uh, perhaps we can host a meeting, a public okay. meeting. Very good. Um, I, when I went through the, the, the rough um, final report, and it, I just want to give people a a flavor for what it for what it said. Um, these aren't like final conclusions about it or anything, because eventually, eventually, that's what I see happening is this becomes the um, the opening of um, uh, some kind of a five-year strategic plan, giving uh, giving us a, a picture of what this town wants to be like, where it's been, where it's going, and all of that. Uh, and this becomes the, the basis for it. But just first first impressions. Um, Thousand people responding is a pretty good number of responses. Number one, um, 640 of them are online. 422 were probably people like myself, old people. Um, no, I, I, I actually I, I responded <laughs> online myself. 78% uh, of those people, 78% of the people who responded were 41 or older. Okay, 41 or older. So it's basically it's a, it's the um, Young, uh, middle middle aged young adults and the, the elderly people who are interested enough in the town to go through this process. <coughs> that I found kind of interesting. 53% of whom were male, 43% were, were female. 
for to, to not uh, want to declare either, either way. Um, at least 74% uh, of them have lived at least 11 years in the town. Um, the largest block uh, have lived here between 31 and 50 years in residence in this town. 47% um, of those people owned a home, home in Whitman. And 32%, which is a, a figure that's a little lower than I thought it, it might be, 32% of the people who responded either have had children uh, in the schools or have children currently in our schools. Uh, only 28% of the people who bothered to fill out the form uh, attended town meeting, which is interesting. Um, as far as uh, those questions that dealt with quality of life and whether this is a nice place to live, 69% of the people who responded said that Whitman was a good to very good place to live qual as far as quality of life was concerned. 72% it was a nice place to, to live. 71% said the entertainment in the town is, goes from very poor to poor. Um, it's starting to sound like the town that, that I live in. Um, but three quarters of the people said it's a great place to raise a family. The responses were from good to very good. 69% um, that it was a, a poor to average place to own, to own your business. And that's something that we know yeah. too. And that's one of those things that goes into this whole pile of the, of the, uh, of the things that we have to deal with as a town. Um, most important issues, um, three stick out. However, the top two only received 36% of the, of the people who responded to it, but the most important issues were uh, roads, uh, transportation upkeep, 31%, thought that that's something we have to be concerned about. Property tax rates, 36%, and schools, 36%. As far as increasing revenues, um, only 17% thought that we should uh, deal with raising our property taxes. 47% thought that we could uh, take care of our problems raising um, fees and licenses. As far as decreasing costs, the most popular way of decreasing costs was to reduce each department by a certain percentage. Um, they were, people were not interested in laying off any people. Um, what conclusions, what general conclusions can we draw from all of this? We like our town. People like living in this town. They want to improve the schools and the roads. Um, the three most popular um, services are fire, police, and schools. Um, they do not, people do not want layoffs, and they want taxes to remain low. Uh, and taxes have remained low. And you know, I, I think I've heard, if I've heard Dan say it once, I've heard him say it a gazillion times over the years, we, Every time we come up to the town meeting time, we, we don't want to lay off people and want to keep our taxes as low as we can. We've basically done that. Okay. But it's placed us in a position where we have, we're going to have trouble maintaining what we're doing. It's an, it, it is embarrassing to be in the bottom 10 of, of, of a list of 350 towns as far as their our, uh, contribution to the schools. Although Frank has, Frank has, has given us some some balance as to how you, how you, t you take that. But it, it's not, that, that's not good. Um, the, as far as overrides are concerned, this is kind of interesting. 62% um, of the people who filled out this survey, you took the trouble to fill out the survey, would vote for some kind of an override. Only 19% would do it for total operations. 43% uh, would do it for specific projects. Which specific projects would they would they like to give money towards? 69% of them the schools, 56% police, 56% fire, 46% DPW. Um, interestingly, <coughs> when you look at the DPW, the, one of the things that isn't that popular is a new DPW building, which is kind of crazy. But got to fix those got to fix those potholes and and, uh, and 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 plow that plow that snow. Um, in general, I in general I was. Um, I'm enthusiastic about the survey, uh, although it does present an interesting problem. It looks as if people like the services in our town, however, they have some hesitancy to pay for it. They like it, they like it the way it is, but they want to continue paying the low taxes that we've been having them pay. And that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a, a real conundrum. 
because it's in a way if if we are able to to create the kind of town that they like living in some of them will have to will, will, will think they have to move in other words if, if the only way to get the top to, to continue to maintain our services in the town is by a combination of wage freezes and debt exclusions and overrides there are some people for whom that's not going to that's not going to be very popular but it's also one of those unpopular kind of decisions as a group of people that we may have to we may have to make and hopefully getting all of this information out in a timely fashion will help them. I didn't mean to go on go Mr. on that Mr. Chairman the um, once we get the final report from this I think that would go a long way to the the group that you chair Mr. Lambiese on uh, sort of the blueprint of how we need to go year after year in this trying to fix this problem on an annual basis. Using those results, incorporating them into the the Bible, budget Bible that we're going to mm -hmm. try to put together, I think would make go a long way because clearly that's a good slice of the pie on what we need to incorporate in. Yeah the, the other thing that other thing that we have to think about is how we're going to get people to come to the polls with a positive frame of mind about overrides and debt, debt exclusions. Um, I, I think one of my favorite moments in my, my experience with, with government in this town was back before the education reform at a time when we had a K through 8 system and a 9 through 12 system. And I was I was act, I was acting as the chairman at the time of the K through eight system, and we had a real problem as far as as, as uh, money was concerned. Um, we had uh, certified a, a budget one particular year, and um, it, it wasn't it was a it was a budget that was high. It's the kind of thing that the schools do now that all the schools do now. Maybe I was teaching that night of town meeting, so I came to the town meeting right on time. The finance committee. I called them the Evil Finance Committee at that time. The fi the f now I love them. But the, fi the, fi the Finance Committee and the, and the Selectmen, no, not the sele no, and the School Committee. Finance Committee and the School Committee and the Selectmen met before that town meeting. And they made a deal based upon the, su based upon su the superintendent's request to cut two teams of teachers from the middle school and to close the school, I think it was the Park Avenue school. They made a deal to do that. And then I walk in and somebody, somebody comes over to me and says, and they vote, and the, the school committee voted six to one to do it. Uh, as what, and then the other committees all went along with it and said, you're gonna have to present this to the town, that we, we made this deal. We just made a vote, had a vote. And I thought to myself, geez. So I, I got up and I said, as, I said, as a chair, as chairperson of the school committee, I have to tell you that they have voted to do this, recommend this to the town meeting. But you know, as a parent and and as somebody that worked in education, I have to tell you it's a crummy idea. And I and I, I gave this little talk about how my daughter went to the school and it helped her out and blah 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 blah. Um, the the town hall was packed, and the town hall voted overwhelmingly to support the schools and to screw that that whole thing. Um, and I that was like sweetest moment, uh, one of the sweetest moments of my life was to have that happen. It had nothing to do with me. What happened was the PTAs and all of the school, the school parents packed the town meeting with their people. That's all they had to do. That's all they did. Just packed that town meeting and they did a vote that caused the town grief. It caused, it caused the town grief for a while. Somehow, some, somewhere, we've got to do something like that with the debt exclusion and the override and pack the, that election with people that are going to vote for it, for whatever reason. Uh, I absolutely agree with you. And actually, the other night, well, I would probably actually the other day, uh, I usually like to catch up and, and watch school committee Hanson selectman meetings. And, and there was something that was said that goes right along with this. Uh, and it's about, sa it's not about saving people or, or dollars what somebody's making. It is the service. And we need to sell the service. And that's the service of education, the service of our police and fire, the service of our DPW. And I've, I've said this before, I think as long as people realize that they are getting something for the dollar that they're spending, 
they will be behind us. And it is a service. We can argue where we want the money spent, but at the end of the day, those services make this town what it is. And what we can't, what we can't forget is that we haven't done a bad job uh, providing those services up until this point. Um, I read an article in the, um, the Globe today, and I think, I think um, the president of the fire union was quoted. And they were talking about the deplorable positions in some firehouses across the Commonwealth. They used, I think Brookline was the one they were talking about. And I'm thinking, you know, our firehouse is in pretty good shape. Our police station is in pretty good shape. We have a pretty good looking school. Um, we have, last year, um, we're paying for it this year, but last year we voted um, to give the schools the, the nine and a half percent increase that they asked for. And it actually, it was Brian. It was Brian that made the, mo made the motion. Old Tea Party Brian um, made the motion, and uh, which was shocked a whole lot of people. Um, but he made it because he thought it was would be fair. It would be fair to the schools to say you're not. We're going to take care of you. You don't have to pit yourself against other people. You don't have to be the only people that go out for the override. Right. It was a matter of fairness, and I thought that was I thought that was pretty good. And we voted that. That does present us with this position today. True, and but we're going to. We're going to find a way out of it, but we're only going to find a way out of it if we can do what Randy says, and that is convince people or remind people the services that they the services they enjoy, the kind of town this is, and that you got to pay for it sometime. And Mr. Chairman, I think that that forum that we discussed earlier would be a perfect time to really put the cherry on the Sunday with that information to come in with a positive look as to where we need to go, but they have to see what would happen if it doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. I have one yeah. last question. Yeah. Frank, on the override that we're looking, the amount, that amount is there, which includes a wage freeze. What if it, we, what if we None don't? of this is etched in stone. This is, this is one possibility. I know that, but what I'm saying, if there's no wage freeze whatsoever, then what would the override be? In, you'd have to add the uh, million. Million. Not the million. Million dollars. Right. Yeah, it's That's one, one two. Right. I think it's one two. So right. Right. But you know, let's be let's be positive. I know, no, no, I know, but I like to look at all aspects. The town, the, the town, the town employees have gone through this before. Oh yeah, I remember. Um, and, and actually, school people have gone through this once yeah. before. They postponed raises, so that yeah. that's something. I, I remember when I first started working for the Commonwealth um, at the Massasoit, we went, I, I joined at a time when, um, uh, I, think it was, I think Governor Dukakis was, was, was around, and we went for three and a half years without, without a raise. Three and a half. Just begun, just begun work, three and a half years without a raise. It was kind of, but we got, we got through it, and I'm sure we can get through it too. <laughs> Okay, um, we're down to Mr. Salvucci, Route 18 Construction. Yeah, uh, I just want to. What? Well, they're leaving. Second. <laughs> something you said there. Just want to just want to <laughs> update uh, the town. Uh, the project of Route 18 and 27 and 18 and 14, that project was awarded to PA Landers. That will, they will, groundbreaking will be this spring. There will be a pre-project meeting of all departments, police, fire, DPW, uh, elected, you know, town administrator. Uh, prior to the start of that, to go over what's needed in the, in the project, you know, as far as details, uh, to maintain the town is safe because they'll be totally destroying those two intersections one at a time, putting new water main through, which uh, which is a, a big thing that'll get done. So, anyways, that is about to happen uh, come this spring. Thank you. We've already uh, put some money aside for this. Oh yeah, mid coming out of the yeah, water right. and sewer. Okay. No, that's what that account right. for. Okay, policies and procedures, recreation. Gentlemen. Approximately a year ago, the uh, Recreation Commission 
directed me to come up with some sort of a policy and procedures regarding field usages and the permit policy. Uh, myself and Assistant Town Administrator uh, Lisa Green started working on this. Uh, she's been there a couple of times and we've had issues uh, when it was brought to the Selectman's office with outside groups and the local groups. I mean, these issues were numerous. Some groups thought that they actually owned the fields, uh, kicking people off the fields, uh, so on and so forth. So we, for over a year, we were working on this, and it was kicked back and forth between the uh, Recreation Commission, myself, and Lisa Green. And now that we have this comprehensive uh, policy handbook, I'd like to see if we can get it uh, approved and we can carry on with this. Okay, thank you. It's the Field Uses and Permits Policies Handbook. So if someone like to make a motion to accept it. I'll make a motion. Second. Second. Uh, questions? A lot of this was Lisa's work. Right. So. Do you have anything you want to say? Or is there any questions? Or just um, what I did when I was putting the agreement together, the um, um, field usage agreement, I gathered information, I researched what a lot of other towns did um, and had in their agreements, and I pulled a lot of the information and put it all together in the, uh, the field usage <coughs> agreement. And hopefully that will alleviate a lot, a lot of the problems that recreation has faced in the past with different um, Whitman organizations um, having this confusion of who is allowed to use this field or that field. So there's a tiered system in there that will apply to each group. So they all know where they stand. <coughs> they will know what the expectation is as far as their behavior at the fields. Um, I think it's a really good agreement and hopefully it'll address any of the past issues that they've had with local sports organizations. And I also like to thank Lisa Green for her major uh, input on this. Anyway, this would not have been possible without her. Okay. Thanks. Mr. Chairman, you, you, can't, you can't hit or bounce a ball off a fence? <laughs> Never. <laughs> Quick question. Um, we have weak fences. <laughs> you got a fence on How, did, how did the there. Recreation Commission vote? Was it a unanimous vote on this? No, yes, it sir. was. <clears throat> okay, anybody, have a, anybody else? Just all league uh, presidents and administrators, managers will obviously get a copy of this if adopted. Yes, they'll uh, they'll be they'll have to sign it, the agreement, and everybody will have it. Anybody who you, any organization, whether town or outside, that uses our fields or facilities, will have to sign this. Anything else? What if they don't sign it? <laughs> they don't get their comments. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> Very good. Okay, all, all those in all those in favor of aye. 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 Good book. Nice, nice work, both, both of you. Yeah. Thank you. Good job. Uh, we're going to table the uh, public meeting with, with the respect of uh, that application uh, for a future time. Act on the request of Chief Benton to appoint Kyle Bersani, Paige Lambert, and Vanessa Borges Miranda to the position of Auxiliary Special Police Officer through June 30th, 2019. So moved. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Act on the resignation of Camden Bruno from the position of Auxiliary Police Special Police Officer, effective January 23rd, 2019. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Act on the request of Brian Schwady on behalf of the Whitman Baseball and Softball Association to conduct its opening day parade on Saturday, April 20th, 2019, beginning at 9 a.m. with a rain date of April 27th, 2019. So moved. Second. Any discussion? It's nice to see baseball coming in. Yes. In formal weather. Yes, indeed. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Act to accept the disclosure of non-elected municipal em employee of financial interest and determination by appointing authority as acquired by General Law Chapter 268A, Section 19, for Finance Committee Member Justin Evans. So moved. Second. Or second. I have a question. Yes. Um, does this just uh, go with uh, non-elected municipal employee, this, this um, disclosure? Any, any employee that feels that he has a um, even a question of, of ethics even though it, it in his particular instance there is no ethical restriction 
for him acting as a finance committee member on all uh, budgets. However, he felt it necessary to disclose to the public that that relationship exists in order to avoid any appearance. Okay. Why, and, um, why is it coming to us? Just for publication. I mean, it's recorded. It's signed by the moderator, and uh, recorded with the town clerk. Well, the requirement is to give it to your appointing authority, which yes. is just the moderator. Right. So I'm not really sure why we have to take any action on it. We don't. Or would. Okay. Does that still apply if he's an elected position? Yes. No. I mean, the disclosure. I mean, no interference. Because, you know, he's, he's taken out papers, so to be an elected, elected official. It, it has no bearing. Okay. But, no, because it's said role as a, uh, Justin simply wanted to make public his disclosure, which wouldn't happen if he simply filed it okay. with the moderator, that he has a uh, relative who works at the school. No, the reason I said it is because I can remember when I had to fill that out when my son was on the fire department. And I had, and, and our lawyer said I had to leave the room when we discussed it. Yeah, but you were a selectman. Yeah, well, same difference. I mean, he's running for selectman. If he gets he, elected, he's, he's, not, he a gets selected. he's not a selectman. He's not a selectman. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So we don't have to vote to accept this, but we can no. if we'd like. Is that what you're telling me? Yeah, it's, ba it's publication. Wanted, I didn't he, realize he it was going to be set up for a vote. He wanted people to, okay. Okay, so. I'll take back my motion. Just acknowledge the okay, filing. So acknowledged. It's the <laughs> motion of acknowledgement. Yeah, that sounds uh -huh. good. Is there a second to that motion of acknowledgement? Second. Uh, acceptance. And, and not acceptance. Uh, just acknowledgement. Okay, all those in favor of acknowledging? Yeah. Uh, okay. okay, we acknowledge. Okay, we need to go into executive session in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21A, Exception 2, to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel, or to conduct collective bargaining sessions or contract negotiations with non-union personnel. So moved. Second. Yes. Uh, yes. 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 Shut off the mic. Come back into open session only to adjourn. Oh, yeah.